Hello, lovely people. How's everybody doing today? Are we all enjoying the sunshine? Is it sunny? Um, sunny where you guys are? Uh, hello, Namrata. Hello, Plumi. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, Georgia. Welcome back, uh, Jasmine and Irshad and Charlotte. Um, we'll be getting started in just a minute. We'll just see um, how many people sort of let a few more people show up. Um, yeah, it's really sunny where I am. It's nice. Uh, I'm looking forward to the bank holiday tomorrow and then I can go and sit in the sun. Hi, Raul. Or is it Rahul? You can tell me which if you would like me to pronounce your name correctly. Hey, Manbe. Okay, so um, my lovely colleague has just dropped the presentation into the, the chat, so feel free to download that. It's also in the description if you need it at any point. And we're at 49.9 thousand subscribers, which is super cool. Um, so if you subscribe to us, we would be very appreciative because then we can sort of pop open a bottle of apple juice <laughs> to celebrate the, the 50K. Hi, Artin. Good afternoon. All right, um, let's, let's I'll just share my screen and we'll get started a bit slowly. So um, if you haven't met me before or you've not been here before, welcome. My name's Georgia. Um, so the plan is today is to have a look at some questions on equilibrium and I shall share my screen with you so you can see my beautiful, um, beautiful questions. Mm, here we go. Okay, so the plan essentially for these tends to be that we um, run through questions rather than, so this isn't really like a teaching session. What we do is we like, I give you a question, I give you a little bit of time to do it yourself. Um, and then we'll go through it together and you guys can ask me any questions uh, about the question if something's confusing you. So that's the gist. And today we're sort of looking at equilibrium. So this is gonna be um, sort of year 12 level equilibrium. So we're not going to be looking at equilibrium in sort of heterogeneous systems. So systems with like both um, with uh, reactants and products in different states slash phases. Uh, and we're not going to be looking at Kp, so the equilibrium constant for pressure. So we're just going to be looking at equilibrium constant for concentration, so Kc, and the Chatelier's principle. So just keep that in mind if you're a year 13 and wondering why I haven't uh, sort of added other bits and bobs. Um, but yes, uh, and hello everybody who's just sort of popped in now. Um, am I feeling better? Yes, I'm feeling much better. Um, I'm, I'm glad, glad to be back. Okay, so as usual at the end, um, I'll be showing you through our lovely website and we'll have a code for all of you guys that would like to sort of sign up. Um, we can sort of help you get through the isolation period with some teaching if your schools are closed and things like that. Um, so there'll be a coupon, coupon for that. Uh, so, all right, let's just get started then. So the first question we have is multiple choice. So the first couple are multiple choice questions. And it says, this question is about the equilibrium reaction between hydrogen and carbon dioxide. So we've got um, gaseous hydrogen, gaseous carbon dioxide, and we're producing uh, water and carbon monoxide, and we've been given some kind of enthalpy value. And it said, what would the following changes uh, what effect would the following changes have on the rate of reaction and yield of carbon monoxide? And you've got some options there. So I'm going to give you guys like another 30 seconds or so to pick something and then I'll let you know what the answer is. So we're pretty much all saying the exact same answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tell you guys, confirm what you're all saying. Um, the answer is A. Can somebody tell me why the answer is A? 
Why is it A? Yeah, because the position of the equilibrium is going to shift um, to favor the the endothermic reaction, right? So if we increase the temperature, we'll shift towards the endothermic side. And we can see here that delta H, our enthalpy is positive. And if we have a positive value, the um, that means that our forward reaction is endothermic. So increasing the temperature um, favors our, our products. So well done, everybody that got that. Exactly, exactly, Fellini, um, Le Chatelier's principle. Perfect. So I feel like we're not going to have any questions because pretty much all of you got that right. But feel free to ask any questions um, and I can explain whatever, whatever you need. Um, OK, so we're moving on to part B. So it's the same question, but it's uh, in terms of an increase in pressure. So what, what effect would the following changes uh, with, the, with the increase of pressure have on the rate of reaction and yield of carbon monoxide? getting some, some different answers for this one. Got another 20 seconds to decide. Okay, we're getting lots of C's and D's. Um, and I'm gonna tell you the answer is C. So I believe lots of you are saying D because you were recognizing that there were the same number of moles on both sides, right? So if there are the same number of moles on both sides, increasing the pressure doesn't sort of increase the yield of either the reactants or the products. But as this is a gaseous reaction, what does the um, increase of pressure do to the, the proximity, the nearness of all of the molecules? What would increasing the pressure do to how far the molecules are from each other? Any ideas? Yeah, they get closer, right? If you increase the pressure, every single molecule in this reaction is likely to be closer. And if they're closer together, then they're more likely to collide um, and if they're more likely to collide, you're more likely to increase the rate of reaction. So overall, the rate's going to increase, but it's just not going to favor either side. Um, does anybody have any questions, given that we sort of had a few, few different answers in there? Yes, no, maybe. All right, I'm not seeing any questions. So I'm just gonna, so why is there no change in yield? Um, there's no change in yield because um, we haven't sort of unbalanced the reaction in any, in any way. So both the, the, rea the forward reaction, so the reaction between um, hydrogen and carbon dioxide producing those products is going to increase, but the backward reaction is going to increase equally because there's the same number of moles. So the backward reaction reacting water and carbon monoxide, creating our carbon dioxide and hydrogen is also going to increase. So you're gonna increase both rates. So the overall amount of either side produced is not going to change. Um, I hope that helps. Um, okay. So the last sort of uh, multiple choice question we're gonna have a go at says the indicator methyl orange is a weak acid and may be represented by the formula HA um, and the equation for it's shown below. So we have another equilibrium reaction here. We've got HA and acid splitting into A minus plus H plus, so some protons. Um, and the color of our acid in the with, is, is red and the color of the conjugate base, if you're in year 13 and you know what that is, is yellow. 
And it says under certain conditions at equilibrium, the solution of HA has a yellow color on the addition of a small volume of dilute sodium hydroxide, the color of the solution would do what? So what happens if you add dilute a small volume? So I'm just gonna underline some really important bits, a small volume of dilute sodium hydroxide. Getting lots of bees. This would be the time for any year 13s to really sort of use their knowledge of acids and bases to help out. <laughs> that's that's fair enough, um, Talia, uh, if you don't know. I'm gonna give just like a, a little bit more time. Okay, so what kind of um, what kind of reactant is sodium hydroxide? What is sodium hydroxide in terms of um, sort of chemicals? What is it? Any ideas? It's an alkali, yeah, it's a base. It's a base, right? So here we have an acid reaction. Um, and the acid reaction, if you added a lot of base, the equilibrium would change, right? If you added a lot of base, the base would sort of um, pick up some of these H pluses, as I saw some of you saying in there. Um, but if you only add a small volume of dilute sodium hydroxide, you're not going to get a massive shift in equilibrium, right? So the, the key was that it's only a tiny bit. There's a small volume, so there's no change. So you wanna be really careful about, so for example, if the question were to say, um, if it was this, if this was question one and it was talking about a temperature change and it said the temperature changed by 0 0.01 uh, degrees, you wouldn't really expect much of a change in equilibrium, especially not something as large as a color change. Yeah, it's a buffer. So year 13s, it's a buffer. How does it being a base affect it? So what I was saying is if it was a strong base, um, a base accepts protons. So a base will accept those H pluses. So if it was a strong base, it would remove some of those protons from the solution and shift the equilibrium. Um, but as it's a, so it's a very dilute base and a very small volume of it. Not enough of the H pluses are going to be picked up um, for the equilibrium to shift. Yeah, if it was a large volume of sodium hydroxide, um, then you would get a bunch. Remember sodium hydroxide, the basic part is the OH minus, right? So if that OH minus reacted with the H plus, you would get water. And if you reduce the concentration of H plus, um, equilibrium wise, if you lower the concentration of H plus, which way would the equilibrium shift? Any ideas? Yeah, to the right hand side. If we were to reduce our concentration of H plus by adding a lot of a strong base, then we would shift the equilibrium to the right and our solution would become sort of more yellow. Um, but as we've got a small volume of a very dilute base, nothing changes. Um, does that make sense to everyone? Yes, no, maybe. Hopefully. I'm gonna I'm gonna move forwards and then if anybody has any questions, they can sort of let me know. Um, okay, so the next question says methanol, so CH3OH is an important feedstock.
feedstock for the, chem the chemical industry. In the manufacture of methanol, carbon dioxide and hydrogen are reacted together in the reversible reaction shown below. So we've got carbon dioxide and hydrogen making methanol and water, and we've been given an another enthalpy value. And it says that high pressures and low temperatures would give a maximum um, equilibrium yield of methanol. But we want to explain why the actual conditions used in the chemistry industry might be different. So first of all, um, let's just really quick, uh, quickly think about why, why does the question say that high pressures and low temperatures would give a maximum equilibrium yield? Why would that be the case, equilibrium wise? Yeah, so high pressure would shift the equilibrium to the right hand side because there are more moles on the left hand side. So, so they would sort of collide more and produce more things on the right hand side. We also have an exothermic reaction. So yeah, exactly cookie crumbles. It's exothermic in the forward reaction. So low temperatures would favor the forward reaction. So all of these things work equilibrium wise. The question is asking why, why do we not do that in, chem, in the chemical industry? Why might that not be a thing? So I've seen some answers in there, but I'm gonna give the rest of you some time to actually do those. So let me know. It's two marks, so you need to say two things, of course. Have a go. I'm seeing some good ones in there. Yeah, I'm seeing some really good answers. So the problem with low temperature, um, lots of you are saying, is that the, the rate is too slow. So sometimes even if a low temperature would um, shift the equilibrium in the right direction, it gives such a slow rate that it's just not worth it. The reaction's just too slow. Um, and then we also have low temperature. And most of you are saying, I'm really, I'm quite proud actually, because um, most of you are saying perfect, perfect things for high temperature, which isn't always the case. Sorry, high pressure. So high pressure is either, you can either say that it's expensive to maintain or you can say um, it's a safety risk. Yeah, so um, the, the thing that the mark scheme always says do not allow is that high pressure is explosive. So that you would not gain marks, but I don't see anybody doing that, but just sort of like keep in mind that in when you're talking about high pressure, you can talk about a safety risk, but you can't talk about explosiveness uh, because not everything that's high pressure has a risk of, of explosion. So we just need to sort of keep that in mind, but well done. Well done, everybody, because you guys did super well. Um, anybody got any questions? I'm going to move on because there's a bit of a lag, so I never know if there are actually any questions. I'm going to start moving on, and then if I see a question, I'll, I'll pop back. Can you go to the toilet? Of course you can go to the toilet, Harry. I'm wondering if you are joking. Of course, if on YouTube land, you never have to ask permission to go to the toilet. Um, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forwards, but yes. Um, cool, so colorless solutions, no worries in and, uh, of X and Y, both aqueous, react to form an orange solution of Z according to the following reaction. So we've got X plus two moles of Y making Z, and we've got another enthalpy value. Um, and it says a student added a solution containing 0 0.5 moles of X to a solution containing 0 0.5 moles of Y and shook the mixture. After 30 seconds, there was no further change in color. 
the amount of Z aqueous at equilibrium was 0 0.2 moles, deduce the amount of X and Y at equilibrium. Um, So where do we start? Anybody got any ideas? So like, actually, no, just have two minutes. Um, two minutes to have a go, and then, then I will, then we can talk about where we might start if anybody's having any trouble. So if Lumi doesn't get it, that's all right. We will go over it in just a minute. I just want to give some other people a chance to have a go by themselves. And then I will explain all the things. Getting some nice answers in there, but I will talk about it in just a little bit. So you got about another 60 seconds to have a go. Help, I'm lost. I like, I, I'm quite enjoying your, your YouTube name. Um, I hope that you're not actually lost. All right, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. So the thing that is most important um, to think about when we're given a question like this. So the first thing we think about is we look at how much it said uh, was entered when, when the solution was first sort of formed. So we know that we had 0 0.5 of X uh, moles and 0 0.5 moles of Y. And we're then told that at equilibrium, Z was 0 0.2. So I imagine that some people were confused about um, why we were being asked about how much X and Y there were if we were already told. So remember, that at equilibrium, some of X and Y have already reacted uh, to form Z. So the equilibrium mixture should, for any kind of equilibrium reaction, should contain some X, some Y, and some Z. So we know how much we originally put in of X and Y, and we know how much Z is formed. So the way we work out how much X is formed and how much Y is formed is by looking at the moles in the equilibrium reaction. So we know that uh, mole ratio-wise, for every one mole of X reacted, we should have um, one mole of Z, right? So that means that if we had originally 0 0.5 moles of X, then we will have had some amount reacted already to make, um, to make Z. So all we do is take away the amount of Z at equilibrium, uh, and then we get our amount of, of X at equilibrium, right? Because 0 0.2 moles of X must have reacted to make 0 0.2 moles of, um, sorry, other way around. 0 0.2 moles of X must have reacted to make 0 0.2 moles of Z. Um, so at equilibrium, we should have 0 0.3 moles left. So well done everybody that said 0 0.3 moles. Um, why is like slightly more complicated because we don't have a one-to-one -one ratio anymore. We have a, a two-to-one ratio. There's two moles of Y um, produce one mole of Z, right? So if we sort of, we started out with 0 0.5 moles of Y, um, that means two moles of that reacted to make one mole of Z which means we don't just take away 0 0.2 this time, we take away two lots of 0 0.2 because um, two times 0 0.2 is how many moles of Y reacted. So 0 0.4 moles of Y must have reacted to make the 0 0.2 moles of Z. 
Um, so we should have 0 0.1 moles of Y. Does anybody have any questions? Because you absolutely must understand this <laughs> for the next question, because the next question is quite tricky. Um, so I just want to, wanted to make sure everybody's comfortable with sort of how we work out equilibrium concentrations from initial concentrations. Any questions? Yeah, it made sense. Is this OCR? Yes, this is OCR at Excel AQA. Possibly you just hadn't covered it in school yet uh, or college or sixth form, whatever you prefer to call it. Can you have two seconds to take it in? Of course you can. Um, I'll wait to see if anybody has any other questions. Um, cool. All right, I'm gonna move on. And this question is gonna be hard to write stuff in because last time you guys said that the, the text was too small. But this question is really big. So we're gonna do our best to sort of squeeze everything in. Um, and this is another equilibrium question, but it's also mixed with a titration question. So it's quite a difficult one, but it's six marks. So that makes sense. Um, and it says ethanol and ethanoic acid uh, react reversibly to form ethyl ethanoate. So that's an ester and water according to the equation here. So here's our ethanol, here's our ethanoic Sorry, no, not ethanol. Here is our uh, ethanol. Do you know what? Here is our ethanol. Here is our ethanoic acid. Here is our ester, and then we've got the water um, at the end. And it says a mixture of eight times ten to the minus two moles of ethanoic acid and one point two times ten to the minus one moles of ethanol is allowed to reach equilibrium at uh, twenty degrees Celsius. And the equilibrium mixture is placed in a graduated flask and the volume was made up to 250 centimeters cubed with distilled water. And then a 10 centimeter cubed sample, of the equilibrium mixture is titrated with sodium hydroxide added from a burette. And the ethanoic acid in the sample reacts with 3.2 centimeters cubed of two times 10 to the minus one mold per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide solution and our end goal is to calculate the value for Kc, the equilibrium constant for the reaction of ethanoic acid and ethanol at 20 degrees Celsius. And we're giving our answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. So this is quite a long one. It's quite a complicated one. So we're gonna, we're gonna take it step by step um, in a bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna sort of just make a suggestion that you make a table of your sort of initial values and your equilibrium values. Um, I want you to sort of reread the question to yourself quite carefully because of the titration stuff in there. It's not something you're gonna be able to predict sort of based on like, oh, I've seen questions like this. Chances are, unless you've seen this question, you haven't seen a question like this. So just be really careful about reading it. I'm gonna give you like a, um, a little while to try it yourself. Uh, and then I will, I will go through it. So remember that Kc requires equilibrium concentrations, not initial concentrations. You've always hated these? Don't worry, we will go through it. I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of time to have a go yourselves. Um, but it is a really hard question, so don't be panicking if you, you know, are looking at it and thinking that. It is genuinely hard. There are a lot of questions that are equilibrium questions. There are a lot of questions that are titration questions, but there aren't that many that combine the two, but there will always be a question in your exam that is supposed to sort of be harder, uh, that is supposed to sort of combine um, topics uh, in such a way that is like a bit new. So you should get used to doing questions that throw you off a bit because the more often you do questions that throw you off, the more likely you are to be able to sort of strategize around seeing sort of slightly new types of questions. Um, so just sort of be, be aware of that.
Yes, there are a lot of words, Cleo. I'm going to sort of start drawing the table that we want to be drawing um, so that in a minute I can sort of get started properly with the explanation. You think you may have it? Awesome. This specific question is AQA, but this could come up on any of the specs. This does not include anything that is not at Excel or does it, my head is blocking things? What's my head blocking? Oh, my head's always in the way. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that before I sort of got started with things. Um, yeah, sorry. My head is, I should draw like a little box around where my head is so I can like, cause I don't see my head on the little presentation. So I'm gonna, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay, cool, that's fine. I can see that that will contain all of the columns Gosh, I always did think I had a big head. Uh, all right. Okay, I'm gonna give you another like 10 seconds ish to be having a go. Okay, let's get started then. Um, so just to make sure you guys can see um, the table. Yes, this is, is this, no, this is helpful for CIE um, for the Cambridge spec. It's just that I specifically prep for AQA, Edexcel and OCR because they're the most common, Jeremy. But yes, this is useful for Cambridge. Um, cool. Oh, so just to explain my table in case you are unfamiliar with these kinds of tables, we have, um, this is my acid. So this is, I've got a column for my acid for the initial and equilibrium um, concentrations. This is my um, alcohol and there's my column for that initial and equilibrium concentrations. And I've got a column for my ester, which is the first product and a column for my um, water. And I'm just gonna sort of slowly fill in this because I need my equilibrium concentrations for KC. So just in case we've forgotten, KC is always the concentration of products over reactants. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to look for the concentrations of our products over our reactants at equilibrium so that we can fill in our, our KC formula and work out um, the answer. So uh, unhelpfully, <laughs> we don't even have initial concentrations in this question. We have a titration that worked out the initial concentrations. Um, so what is my titration between? What, what are we actually titrating? In, in these situations, I really wish the, there wasn't so much of a lag. Any ideas for, yeah, thank you, uh, Namrata. So it's between our acid and our NaOH. So what I'm, re I'm gonna do really quickly is make sure we know our molar ratios between those things, because that becomes important, right? When we're working out sort of like molar values, we need to make sure our molar ratios are okay. So the first thing you wanna do in situations like these is have an equation for the neutralization uh, reaction that you're doing um, in your titration. So we can see here that we have a one-to-one -one ratio uh, between our ethanoic acid and our sodium hydroxide. So we're not gonna to have to think about molar ratios at all, really. It's one-to-one, -one, so it's fine. 
Um, so we've been given, we know that 3.2 centimeters cubed of the um, two times 10 to the, to the minus one of sodium hydroxide um, is going to help us figure out how much ethanoic acid was in our mixture uh, at equilibrium. So I'm gonna first work out my number of moles of sodium hydroxide by doing um, my two times one, two times 10 to the minus one, which is just 0 0.2. And then I wanna be timesing it by my volume, right? Uh, what do I need to make sure I do to my volume? Anybody? There's something wrong with the volume I've been given. Yeah, I need to divide it by a thousand. I need to convert to decimeters cubed. So I have 3.2 and I'm gonna divide it by a thousand and I should get um, 6.4 times 10 to the minus four uh, as my number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So because as we said, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, I should have 6.4 times 10 to the minus four moles of acid in the neutralization reaction. But we have to think about volumes here because of our because we've got sort of some changes in volumes in our um, titration, right? So what is the volume uh, in which we find this? Um, what volume of acid did we use for this titration? What was our volume of acid? In the ten, in the ten centimeters cubed, yeah. But we're going to have to sort of work up to the two hundred and fifty exactly. So there are the number of moles that we've just worked out is the number of moles of acid in ten centimeters cubed, um, which is six point four again because we we know that it's a one to one ratio. Is six point four times ten to the minus four. Um, so we have our number of moles of acid in the 10 centimeters cubed, but how, how, how are we going to work out the number of moles of acid in the sort of original equilibrium mixture? What do we need to do to that value? Yeah, so I'm getting lots of people say times um, 25, which is correct, right? Because we have um, we have 10 centimeters cubed. It was originally in a 250 centimeters cubed sample. Uh, 250 divided by 10 is 25. So we need to do, so our number of moles of acid in the 250 centimeters cubed is equal to 6.4 times 10 to the minus four times 25, which should give us 1.6 times 10 to the minus two. So at this point, which values do we have? So we have a number of, we have a, a number of moles, some numbers of moles that we can sort of fill in in our table already. Um, what, what does that uh, acid number of moles represent that we can sort of shove in our, in our table? And I might sort of like, I'm going to switch pages and rewrite my table because I'm going to need more space. So just bear with me while I do that. But let me know which, which values can I now shove into my table? Which ones do I have from the question? Which ones do I, did I, what did I just work out? Where did the 25 come from? So we had, if I sort of flip back, that was a 10 centimeter cubed sample from a 250 centimeter cubed sample. So we had to times by 25 
to account for the number of moles of acid in 250 centimeters cubed instead of, um, instead of 10. Cool. So did I get some uh, things in there? No, I didn't. I did not get any suggestions for what I can put in my table. Um, okay, so we just worked out. What did we just work out? Guys, what was the thing we just worked out? If I go back to this page. Yeah, we just worked out the number of moles of acid in 250. So what does that represent? What, what is that? Acid as the initial value or acid as the equilibrium value? It's not the initial. So remember, if we read the question, so be really careful to read and reread the question in long questions like this. It says that the ethanol and the ethanoic acid were allowed to reach equilibrium and then, then it was um, titrated. So it's really important to sort of read and reread the question in this kind of case. So we've just worked out the acid number of moles. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus two moles at equilibrium. At what was the initial uh, number of moles of acid? What was our initial number of moles of acid? Yeah, eight times 10 to the minus two. It says it right here. Exactly. So right next to it, we've got the initial moles of ethanol. So we can also put those in. So that's 1.2 times 10 to the minus one. And I should have been doing this on the, on the next page. So I'm going to flip over and do that here. So 1.6 to the minus two um, equilibrium, eight times 10 to the minus two. I'm going to sort of make that a bit bigger because that looks dodgy. Eight times 10 to the minus two at initial and for my alcohol, one point. Uh, two times 10 to the minus one. Okay, so I have my initial values and I have one equilibrium value. Um, if I know, so if I know that um, what my initial value of acid is and my initial and my equilibrium value of acid, what else can I work out? What's sort of my next step? Yeah, the change. So I want to know how much my acid reacted. How is that going to help me? What can I find out from? Yeah, that's going to help me figure out how much alcohol I have. So if I work out my number of moles of acid that reacted, so that's going to be the difference between the two, right? That's going to be my initial, so eight times 10 to the minus two, take away my equilibrium, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus two then I'm gonna be able to figure out how much of the acid reacted. So that's 6.4 times 10 to the minus two. And if I have 6.4 times 10 to the minus two moles of acid reacted, um, how many moles of the alcohol reacted? Is it the same? Is it different? Yeah, it's the same. So 6.4 times 10 to the minus two moles of the acid reacted. So the number of moles of my um, alcohol that reacted is also 6.4 times 10 to the minus two moles. So if that's how many moles of my alcohol reacted, how many moles of alcohol do I have at equilibrium? What do I need to do?
where did the 6.4 come from? I did, I worked out how much acid reacted by working out how much acid is at equilibrium. So that was the whole last page, that was the titration. Um, and I took that away from how much acid I put in originally, which was the eight times 10 to the minus two. Yeah, exactly. I need to, to take away. I need to say, okay, so I started with 1.2 times 10 to the minus one uh, moles of, of alcohol. Um, and I, I know that 6.4 times 10 to the minus two reacted. Um, so at that point, I know how much I have at equilibrium, which should be 5.4 times 10 to the minus two. Um, cool. So we know how much alcohol we have at equilibrium and we know how much acid we have at equilibrium. How much ester um, are we going to have at equilibrium? What value, how are we going to work that out? So yeah, so the initial, you're right, Lucas, the initial for both the ester and the, and the water is zero, because of course, um, at the beginning, there is none produced yet. So we just shove them in um, as zero for the beginning, because of course, if we just just a second ago put acid and, and alcohol into a solution, there's going to be no ester and water yet. Um, but here we're looking for the equilibrium and somebody said they're going to be the same and they are going to be the same because for every one mole of um, ester we produce, we're going to have one mole of water also produced. Um, and we know that 6.4 times 10 to the two moles of acid reacted and 6.4 times 10 to uh, the two moles, 10 to the minus two moles, sorry, of alcohol reacted. So if they reacted, then they must then be the ester and the water, right? We know how much has reacted, so we know how much of the ester and the water we've produced. So we should have 6.4 times 10 to the minus two of both. Yeah, and now we can work out the concentrations. Um, do we have the information to work out the concentrations? So I'm gonna flip back to this one so that we have the whole, we have the whole question. Yeah, Kang says there's no volume. Yeah, you're right, there's no volume, but we don't need a volume. Why don't we need a volume? Why do we, why is the volume unimportant in this one? Yeah, exactly, they just cancel out, right? Because we've got a one-to-one -one ratio with like literally everything, one mole of acid, one mole of ethanol, one mole of ester, one mole of water. Um, if we were to do KC, and let me just sort of like pretend, let me pretend we have a volume of two. So I'm gonna just pretend there's a volume of two. If we had a volume of two and we're dividing everything by that volume, so we're doing products over reactants, and every and all the volumes were the same then the then they would all cancel out right it's only if one of the the concentration needs to be squared or if you have more products than reactants or more reactants than products uh, that you actually need to take into the into account the volume but if you divide everything by two and it's a fraction they all just cancel out so we can just get rid of them and the person that just said isn't the volume 250 centimeters cubed it's not for the equilibrium reaction. So remember that that 250 centimeters cubed was the titration. Um, the equilibrium reaction, we're never told what the volume, original volume was. We're just told that the volume for the titration was made up to um, 250. Um, so we just need to put in our molar values. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down and you guys are gonna tell me what you get. So we've got all of the equilibrium values in our table. So you guys can just tell me what we should have. So I've got sort of one answer in there. So remember it said to give it to an appropriate 
appropriate number of uh, significant figures? Do we need to state to the examiner anything? No, we need to just state. So you're saying it's 5.6, not 5.4. Oh, you mean the no units wise? No, you can just leave out the units because there are no units. I will tell you what the answer is in just a second. The alcohol is 5.6. Let me go back to my to my working out. No, that was on this page. No, the alcohol at equilibrium was 5.4, wasn't it? It should be. Oh no, you're right. Apologies. Yeah, it should be five point five point six. That's interesting. One sec. Let me just sort of double check my. Double check everything is right. Yeah, apologies. It should be um, five point six not 5.4, sorry about that. Is there, a, yeah, so the alcohol should be 5.6, not 5.4, apologies. I trust your calculator too, help me out. <laughs> All right, so those of you who said 4.74, you were correct for the wrong value of the alcohol, but the, if you wrote it in the right value of the alcohol, it should be 4.57 and there are no units. Because as usual, if, you, if all of the sort of, um, if the molar ratios are the same and we're not sort of squaring by anything and there's the same number of products as reactants, then we should have the same units. I mean, the, we should have no units. Well done, people. That was a really tricky question and you guys did really, really well. So I am proud. I wrote, <laughs> sorry, my brain writes numbers the wrong way around all the time, which is not very helpful for a teacher, I realize. Um, thank you, Knight Hardcore. Um, should be 4.57, not 4.75. Um, cool, all right. So we're done for the day. And as usual, I took longer than I meant to but it doesn't matter. So um, this is the point where I do like our little pitch and we tell you about our lovely website that we've worked really hard to sort of make the best we possibly can. Um, so if you've seen this pitch before and you already have Snap Revise, um, then, you know, you can pop off or just, you know, watch, watch for a little bit longer because you like, uh, I don't know, being here. Um, but in general, sort of this is sort of like a taster of what it's like to be on our, our website. Um, and I'm going to share the website with you now. And then hopefully if you like it, I can give you our, our nice coupon code and then um, everybody will be sort of <laughs> all happy and ready to, to sign up um, with glee. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You're welcome, Namrata. Blah, blah, blah. Where is my thingy? It is here. Cool. So. This is our website. Welcome to the beautiful uh, Snap Revise. Um, and the sort of, as you can see at the top, we've got a bunch of classes running at the moment actually on the website. So biology has a book club at the moment. Um, A-level maths has a drop-in session live at the moment. So we do lots and lots of things. And you basically like subscribe to certain subjects. Uh, so it could be biology, chemistry, physics, maths, and there are like a few more bits and bobs um, although those are sort of like the fullest ones. So I'm going to pretend to be an OCR chemistry student uh, for now. Uh, and you get things like um, your course progress that sort of shows you what the course is like and your weekly process. So like how much work have you done compared to like your, your sort of the grade you said that you wanted to get. Um, and then you like click on a topic that you want to study. Maybe you want to know if you're any good at your acid stuff. So you do a diagnostics quiz and then we tell you which videos you should watch uh, depending on how well you did on your quiz. Um, and you can kind of like skip ahead to topics which we think is important because uh, it's pretty annoying to have to watch bits of a video that 
that you don't want to watch. Um, and then sort of like you do a quiz afterwards to make sure you've got all of your knowledge or your ducks in a row. And then we sort of run you through an exam question um, in a video so that you sort of know what they look like. Um, and we explain sort of why that's the answer and give you a model answer. So that's like on our basic package. Package. And then if you have um, the pro package, then you get all of these beautifully made exam questions for when you run out of the real ones um, or before you run out of the real ones because you want to save those for like actual exam time. Um, and we sort of show you how you would get all of your marks. So once you've had a go, you can mark it yourself. Um, and then you can sort of use these to keep track of whether you're getting something or not. So like we've just <laughs> we just tried to make this as like um, useful as possible sort of like what what could an a-level student possibly need uh, and then if you're on the ultimate package you get me <laughs> uh, as I say every time uh, so I am around um, four days a week to do lots of different things so like on Monday afternoon we have a book club and we're reading about quantum mechanics which is really fun I'm really enjoying it uh, and then we also have things like personal statement writing workshops um, just classes in general. So we're doing one on halogenoalkanes alkanes on Tuesday uh, and amino acids on Wednesday. So I like run you through everything you need to know. And we also have these drop-in sessions also Monday to Thursday um, where you basically just come in and ask me whatever you want. So that's, a, that's the gist. That is our website. And we're sort of super proud of, um, of sort of putting all of that together. Uh, so please do have a look if, if you need some help. Um, if you want to just stay on YouTube because perhaps like you don't have the funds, we're still here on YouTube to help you. So like um, that, it's all good. Um, but so like if you want to set reminders for these, that's probably a good idea if you're sort of a little bit disorganized. Um, and here is your ten pounds off. So you get ten pounds off uh, our our subscriptions uh, for your first month if um, you use this this equilibrium ten code. Uh, and you're welcome. Um, Charlotte and Bangers and Mash and Cookie Crumbles. Stop having such delicious names. <laughs> it's making me hungry and it's not even nearly dinner time. Um, so yes, that's, yeah, stop that. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate those of you who like stuck around till the end and I'm gonna go. Uh, have a lovely bank holiday weekend. It's actually supposed to be warm. So, um, and obviously you want to spend all of it studying, so you're going to sign up. Maybe you take your, your, your laptop or the tablet into the garden. Um, you're welcome. I will see, see you guys uh, next Tuesday on YouTube at, what time is it? At four.